Hey, hey, welcome back. What I've got for you this week is an entire week's worth of dinners. I tried to keep the budget as low as I could. Eat a lot of the items, um, you know, instead of purchasing bread for soup, I made the bread. So I saved a lot of money by making the items that I knew I could. So everything turned out pretty great. I was really happy with this whole week of meals. We had a lot of leftovers. Uh, most of this we ate for lunches. So this was a good amount of food for not a lot of money. So let's jump in. I'll show you what I bought and then we can get to cooking. All right, these are the items we're using for this week. Egg noodles, penne, a turkey, a gallon of milk, two pounds of rice, a package of real bacon pieces, um, a little guy of sour cream, uh, cream cheese, cheddar cheese, cottage cheese, uh, green beans, corn, pinto beans, red enchilada sauce, um, pasta sauce, clearance pasta sauce, garlic, uh, celery, three pounds of onions, pound of carrot, two packages of frozen broccoli, pounds of flour, and I think that's everything. And I already forgot something, the can of potatoes. So that should be everything. All right, so that was all the items that I got for this to start. Um, the turkey was a surprise. So I went into Walmart, I found the turkey for 98 cents a pound, and then I found a turkey that would have been equivalent to the poundage of chicken that I was going to get. Um, I was gonna grab like the chicken thigh package that's like 10 pounds for six or seven dollars at Walmart. And then I was gonna get a three pound package of breast meat. Um, but when I saw the turkey, I thought this is perfect. It's cheaper. I saved about $3 buying the whole turkey instead of getting the pieces of chicken. And then I got more broth as well. So, um, you know, I thought that was a really great deal. I was super happy with that. It was like a manager's special. So one of the first things I'm going to do is break down the turkey. Let's we'll see how we do. I forgot there was a gravy packet too, so I can do something with that. That's cool. And I don't use that junk. And I don't want that thing. Although I can throw it in the, in the Instant Pot. I'll do that. Don't throw anything away. We're gonna use it all. We wanna make sure that we use everything we can um just hang out and i'm gonna get washed up right, and we're gonna get my instant pot out i'm just gonna throw this right in there I'm not putting in the other stuff yet because i just want this to be the cooked chicken or the turkey and then these um scrappy pieces um we'll get to after this just got um however much water this is i'm gonna pour it in here I'll just let that cook on, I don't know, meat. Just turn it on meat for like 30 minutes. And that should be fine, we'll check it. Okay, well this looks pretty much done. I'm gonna pull it out and let it cool off and then pick the bones off. Got all of the scraps in here now, so I'm gonna make bone broth with this. I put a little bit of um, apple cider vinegar in because it helps extract the marrow and the collagen out of the bones. So like, I don't know, that much quarter cup <laughs> salt in there okay there we go two tablespoons all right so I added in two whole onions um, I guess they're not whole I did cut them in half but two onions a couple cloves of garlic three carrots and I think it was three ribs of celery and I don't worry about peeling them or anything because I'm gonna strain this when it's done and this pressure cooker is just gonna just annihilate everything so not worried about that. You do need to wash the celery and the carrots and whatever. And then for the onions, this outer layer looked a little gross on the one onion, so I took that off. But like this looked pretty clean, so I'm not worried about that. Um, and then I didn't bother peeling the garlic. So I've got all that in, and I'm just gonna turn that on to high pressure for like an hour and 20 minutes, I think it goes for, yeah. Just the soup button and then I set it to an hour and 20 and I'm gonna let this go, um, you know, overnight because I'm gonna go to bed now and then it'll be done in the morning. So then it should be some good bone broth. So I got six different sized jars of broth. This looks beautiful. I might strain it again just to get those little bits out but I don't care that much so 
Um, I might just leave them. There's the pile of scraps, all the mess. So pretty happy with that. It's a nice color. It looks really good. It smells good. So that is ready to go. I'll let it cool off and then get it in the fridge. These two were the first batch and this was the carcass. So I've got um, a couple carrots, a few stalks of celery, and then I've got this. I'm going to prep right away two for the soup. So this will be for the pot pie stuff and this will be for the soup. And peeling some carrots. This is my first time too. Excellent. Best mom in the world showed me how to do this. <laughs> We've got the celery, carrots, I've got some garlic I'm going to throw in, two onions, and a can of potatoes. Although, I have a ton of onions. Maybe I'll do three? Nah, I'll just do two. So this will go in the goo. Save your scraps, put them in a broth bag in the freezer so you can make broth the next time you've got um, some bones. I've got the celery, the carrots, and the onions in here with a little bit of fat. Um, you could use oil or butter or whatever. And I'm just letting those get soft. If you saw my pantry video, you know we can make self-rising flour pretty easily. So I've got two cups of flour. I'm gonna do three teaspoons of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and use that for the self-rising flour. And I'm going to cut in a quarter cup of butter, three quarters cups of milk. Alrighty, I'm just gonna cut this into eight because that's what it's supposed to make. All those layers. All right, these are ready to go in. They go in at 450 for like 10 minutes, I think it said. These are probably soft enough to go with here. Um, I'm gonna take one of these jars of chicken broth goo and dump it in here. This has gelled up quite nicely. Maybe too nice. Look at that, like chicken jelly. I throw in some of the uh, turkey meat into here so that can start to warm up. And I'm not worried about the big chunks because once it gets warmer, it'll break up easier. And then I've got four cloves of garlic I'm gonna um, squish into there. I rinse or I drained the potatoes. I'm just gonna dice them up so they're in smaller chunks and then throw them in with the gravy stuff. I'm gonna take this gravy packet and throw it in here to thicken this up. And then um, we'll see what it looks like. This is thickening up really nice. I just threw the potatoes in so those can get warm. I'm gonna add some milk to this. I'll start with a half a cup and see what it looks like and maybe add another half cup. All right, that was a whole cup of milk. It looks pretty good. I'm just gonna let it cook down a little and then we'll be ready to eat. And here are the biscuits. Look how flaky they got. They look so good. They did get a little dark, but they're not burnt, so they'll be fine. It's a completed dish, so I put some of this goo into a bowl and then paired it with a biscuit and it is hot and steamy and ready to go. So we're gonna eat. So this is just crusty bread that I'm, in, I'm going to be making for the soup. So I've got three cups of flour, uh, two teaspoons of yeast and salt. I think it was like two teaspoons, but I didn't put that much in. And then I'm just gonna add water to this and let it rise for like eight hours. So this is just like a, a sticky, shaggy dough. I like to cover it with press and seal and then I throw it in my oven with the oven light on, usually overnight, um, but I'll check it in a little bit. Like I said, it takes about eight hours. I've got carrots, onions, and celery and I've cooked it in some butter. You can use whatever fat. I'm gonna throw the turkey in here and the chicken broth and some water. Alrighty, we got the broth and some water in here and I'm going to turn this up so it'll simmer for a while. And then I'll throw the um, egg noodles in here. There's the bread. It turned out beautiful. I'm gonna cut into it. It's been cooling. It's actually not even warm anymore, but that's okay. This is boiling. I threw in um, some of these chicken broth packets that I had and some garlic salt, because I forgot to put the garlic in, and pepper, and it tastes really good. I just let it come to a boil so that the veggies can soften up. And I'm gonna throw the noodles in now. This was four ounces out of the 16 ounce pack of egg noodles. Um, I'm just gonna crush them up a little cause we don't like big noodles like that. So I'll smash these and then toss them in. If your family likes dumplings and you have the stuff for it, dumplings are great in this soup. I am going to do dumplings, but they're optional. I didn't include them into the 
cost of anything, so you don't have to do them. But if you have the stuff, go for it. All right, there's the soup. You got bread. Looks delicious. It smells delicious. It is delicious. I already tasted it, so that is dinner. I'm super happy with it. All right, so what I've got is four tablespoons of butter. Or you can use lard or um, I think it said some sort of oil. We're just making a roux. And then I've got my flour. So I'm gonna use roughly equal parts. So I'll put in four tablespoons of flour and just see where we are with it. If you had like bacon grease, this would probably work. I was planning on using the fat from cooking the turkey, but there wasn't much there. So um, it didn't work out how I thought it would. But we've got the butter. That's one of our pantry staples that we keep around. We're just gonna keep this, get it warmed up and whisked together. I'm gonna cook out that raw flour taste and incorporate everything. I'm just gonna let that cook for a minute till it's all kind of bubbly. I'm gonna do a half a cup of our broth. And we're gonna do a half a cup of milk. Just a little bit of salt. Just do it till it tastes like it's right. That's it, it's done. It took me like five minutes, it's really good. I'm gonna take a cup and a half of rice and just throw it on the bottom here. I'm gonna throw this onion on top. It's a lot of onion. I love onion. And then I'm gonna throw some garlic in there. Well, my garlic press is, must be dirty. Thought I had it. So, I guess we gotta do this the old fashioned way. I'm just gonna rough chop this, cause it'll all soften up anyways. I just don't want big, huge clumps. That looks good enough. Throw all this in there. And then I'm gonna take my two raw turkey thighs. This is gonna take up my whole pan anyways. And just chuck them in there like that. Now, I'm going to take, I need, um, I don't know, probably two and a half, three cups of water. So I'm gonna do half of it chicken broth. I mean turkey broth, whatever the broth we made. I'll just use up the rest of this jar. And there's a bunch of crud in the bottom. That's just the stuff that didn't like strain off nice. So I'll just stop there and use just the clear stuff. And then I'm gonna take this up to probably maybe two and three quarters with water. Okay, and then I'm going to take the cream of chicken that we just made and mix this right in here. If you want to buy a can of Prima chicken, you can certainly do that. Uh, I had the broth for this, so I thought I'll just make it. And it turned out pretty good. I've actually never made it before. So we'll just stir this up really good. It already smells good. And then I'll just pour this over this. And then I'm gonna use this. You could probably use whatever kind of mixed up all-purpose seasoning you want. But I'm not gonna go too heavy on it. I think I'm gonna throw some pepper in there too. Cause why not, right? And this is gonna go in the oven at 375 for about an hour. And let everything cook real slow. All right, I just pulled this out of the oven. This looks amazing. Um, it looks like everything's cooked. I'm going to take the meat off the bone and just mix everything together but it smells amazing can't wait to dig in here is the completed dish so I ripped all the chicken turkey I ripped all the turkey apart and mixed it in and then just threw it back in the oven for another like 10 minutes and then I've got this served with the broccoli on the side this is a pretty big hearty portion and it turned out great so I'm hoping everybody likes it and we're gonna eat Okay, my turn. Okay. Um, so for this next recipe, I need a mozzarella cheese. I put up a short making the mozzarella. I'm, I'm not gonna show it in this video because it got to be just too long, but um, I can leave the link for that short. And then if you'd like an expanded version of that, let me know in the comments below and I can do that as well. All right, these are the items we're going to be using for the snacks recipe. So this is like a faux lasagna kind of just 
casserole mix-up thing. I don't know what to call it. Um, I've got the pasta sauce, a box of penne, cottage cheese. Now, for the price, I only did a 16-ounce cottage cheese, so I will measure this out and make sure I don't go over that. But always use what you have first. I don't like to buy things that I already have. I'll just include the price of what I'm using and what you could purchase if you were doing this. Um, a block of cream cheese, which I did um, include the whole block, obviously, but I don't know if I'm going to use the whole block, so I think I'll just start with a half a block, and then maybe I'll have a half a block for something else, but we'll see how it goes. And then I've got the mozzarella that we made. It's dried out and ready to go, and the turkey meat. So my pasta is done. I did drain off some of the water. If you have a little butter or oil or whatever, you can throw that in there. It helps to cut the acidity of the tomato sauce. And then I'm realizing now how cheese heavy this is gonna be. So um, hopefully it's delicious. I hope it's not too rich. I took half block of cream cheese and I'm just gonna let that melt. I'll just throw in like a big handful of already looks creamy and delicious so yeah now I'm wondering if this is too much cottage cheese too so I'm gonna dump in the sauce and then throw in my seasonings and just turn it on low and let everything um, melt down oh this smells like lasagna for sure I'm gonna add garlic salt because we love it Throw in some Italian seasoning and maybe a little bit of pepper. So I feel like the half a block of cream cheese and half the cottage cheese was plenty, so I'll have that for something else. Um, I didn't have a plan for it because I thought I'd use it all, but that's cool to have extras. And then we still got plenty of turkey left, so this is turning out pretty good. I'm just gonna pair this lasagna stuff with some green beans and we should be all set to go. So here's the finished dish. This is so good. I just threw a little parsley on because you know it looks pretty. Um, cheese melted nice, tastes good. We got the green beans with it. Ooh. This is definitely good, so that's a win. For this next recipe, I want to do like an enchilada bowl, but I don't want to have a lot of dishes or a lot of prep work, so I'm going to throw it all into a pan and then just bake it in the oven and see how it turns out. Um, I feel like the ingredients are gonna be good, so it should taste fine. That's my theory. We're gonna try it. For this one, I've got one cup of rice, uh, chicken or turkey broth, enchilada sauce, pinto beans, corn, sour cream, cheddar cheese, and then the turkey. So I've got a pan here. Uh, I wonder if I should spray it. I'll just spray it. I don't know if it'll make a difference, but I'm gonna throw my dry rice in there. Then a big handful of this turkey. Then I've got a can of corn, a can of beans. I did rinse the corn, in, or I drained the corn and the beans. I did not rinse the beans. We'll keep that nice beany flavor in there. Just spread this out. Then I've got the enchilada sauce. Do half a can of water. And then I'll do a cup of this chicken broth. This gelatinous chicken broth. Turkey broth, whatever. So I'm going to throw it in the oven like this. And then we'll just kind of check the process. And I'll do these later because I don't think it's going to work now if I do it. This is out of the oven. It smells delicious. I'm going to um, put the cheese. I don't know if I should mix in the sour cream. I'll see what my husband wants. All right, so we decided to mix the sour cream right in, and then I'm going to top it with the cheese and throw it back in the oven for a little bit. I've got the sour cream mixed in. I threw on a little bit of taco seasoning and some salt because it was a little bland. And we are not afraid of cheese in this house, so I used the whole block. I'm going to throw this back in the oven for a little bit and let this get all hot and bubbly. And it's already tasting great, so I can't wait till it's done. Here is the completed enchilada casserole. It looks freaking delicious. I can't wait to eat it. I threw a little hot sauce on it. Alright, I'm going to dive in. 
So this is chicken noodley stuff. What I did here was just make a double batch of um, cream of chicken or cream of turkey because that's the broth I had. So you can definitely use canned stuff of this. This would be about equivalent to like two cans of it. And then I put in some extra chicken broth in there just because it was the end of the jar. And then I've got and then I've got 12 ounces of egg noodles. I bought a 16 ounce package, but I kept some out for my soup. So there's 12 ounces of egg noodles there. And then I'm just gonna take a big handful of turkey and throw it in here so it starts to warm up. All right, so we got a bunch of turkey in there. This, this is whipping up so fast that I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hold on, I'll help you in a second. Um, and these are done too, so I'm gonna dump these into there and mix it all together. So if this seems too thick to you, you can add in a little extra milk or you can add in some of the pasta water, um, whatever you like. But this is basically it, so looks so good. All right, here it is plated up. This turned out great. I love making my own cream of chicken. Um, I'm just gonna make that a thing now. It's so good. So I have to say that these um, like dump and go kind of pan meals where I'm just throwing everything into the pans and putting it in the oven. I'm really loving these. These are great. So um, with that being said, I have another one. It's a chicken bacon ranch casserole. I haven't made this before, but it's the same kind of concept where you just throw a bunch of crap in a pan over some rice. I just did a batch of cream of chicken soup to use with it. So um, I'll show you how I throw it together. I have a pan. Makes for easy cleanup too. Cup and a half of rice. I'm just gonna throw in the bottom. Maybe I should have sprayed it. I don't know, whatever. I picked up these real bacon pieces. Um, it was definitely cheaper than getting a pack of bacon. And I only really needed it for this one recipe. I've got ranch powder that we made in my pantry staples video. If you haven't seen that, I can link that below. So, I don't know, maybe like that much. I don't know how much is in a packet. I could probably look it up, but it looks like enough. Oh, it smells so good. Then our turkey. Here is my cream of chicken. I have just right around a cup of that. And then I'm gonna use the chicken broth. We need about a little over three cups of liquid, I think. And then I'm gonna dump in some water, probably about a cup of water and mix that all together. I'm gonna throw this in the oven at 350 for however long it takes, I guess. I just pulled this out of the oven, mixing it all up. Looks pretty good. Here it is, plated up. We got the rice and the turkey and all the seasonings and broccoli on the side. And we're gonna eat. All right, well that is all the meals that I have. After calculating out all of the servings, um, we ended up with 62 servings for right around that $40 mark. I think that that's pretty dang good. Um, I'm pretty sure that's like 60 cents a serving or 70 cents a serving or something like that, but I was super happy with this. Um, I think all the meals turned out great. I let me know what you think and let me know, you know, any comments you have down below. I love reading everybody's comments and input and I will catch you in the next video and see you later.